Good morning everyone and welcome back to the garage which is over there. Uh, today we are working on Kieran's chimney. There he is, look. Uh, we were rooting around under here a few days ago and discovered this horrible mess under here. So you can see around this joint there should be some kind of a dust seal here uh, which is coming away and everything's really rusty. And nasty so what we're going to do we're going to take this wheel off uh, we're going to remove uh, what we need to, to get to that and try and replace it uh, Kieran informs me that you can replace the kingpin bearings while you're in there and they have to come off to get to that so that's all going to be part of this job so we'll crack straight on right what Kieran's doing first then is he, he is uh, loosening off the wheel nuts before we jack it otherwise the wheel will just spin and also loosening off these little uh, bolts here, which are this E10, is it hex? Star Torx. fitting torques, that's the one. So it looks like that. Um, and it's an E10, so we're just loosening those off. As this, well. this is the, the vacuum hub, as far as I'm aware, which um, again needs to come out to allow everything else to come off once we've got the wheel away. Okay, so everything's loosened off a little bit, and now we'll finish taking off the wheel. As always then, it's safety first uh, when you're jacking. We've got the main trolley jack supported on a block of wood up on the uh, arm thing there. And then we've got an axle stand supported underneath that uh, knuckle just there. So we double safe this time. Yeah. Right, I got myself uh, a nice serving of bongo juice. Um, For those interested parties, that is a 50-50 mix of automatic transmission fluid and acetone and it works as quite a strong penetrating oil. Um, we're going to apply that onto some of these rusty cruddy nuts um, or bolts to uh, see if we can get things loosened up and make things somewhat easier. We're doing that now so that that can be working while we're doing other things. Uh, so yeah, do that first and it can be acting while you're removing the caliper, which is what's coming shortly. So need to remove the caliper. Um, first part of that is these 12 mil uh, thick things, as we often use, on the back here. Once that's off, we can get and then take out the pads and remove the carrier with these uh, ones at the back as well. Do you think this... Uh Junior might have ever been off-road, Kieran. Um, I think it might have been sat in a pond for a year. Hmm. So this is the first side coming off then. I think it's got a bit of length on this one. She's got a bit of length. So there we are, that's what we're removing. Ooh. Possibly Ooh. some old uh, copper grease or something. Or o possibly. Optimistically. <laughs> yeah, optimistically. Possibly fish poo. Here's the second one coming out then. Not so much fish poo. Not so much fish poo on that one. What's next then, Kieran? Uh, hopefully that should just uh, lift up with a wiggle. I could be wrong. Right. Huzzah! Another caliper <laughs> ready for inspection. Yeah, another caliper that needs doing. Good oh. So we'll need to hang that out the way somewhere. I might just uh, slot it in the spring or something. I'll figure it out in a minute. Uh, but as I say, we then take the pads off and then the carrier. Um, that's looking like some heftier uh, nuts on the back there. That might need a bit of a scrub as well. Um, I'll double check what the size is and uh, let you know. Give these pads a good tug. They look pretty meaty still, nice Ooh, and yeah. tidy. That is a good looking pad. Um, okay, let's pull away here. Yeah. All pretty solid stuff there. Cool. Um, we found it is a 17 mil, and fingers crossed they will just ease off with it. Without a hernia! Just nice and gentle. 
Do we need a might, pipe, Kieran? Might need some leverage. Do we need a pipe? Might Hold on then. Pipe. Hold the phone. Once again, John's length of pipe comes to the rescue. Found it in a skip, don't you know? Here we are then. Bit of teamwork. Kieran's holding my length at one end, and I've got my length at the other end. And we're going to see if we can crack off that nut. Oh, I think maybe it went a little bit there. Just sound like it at least uh, might have crumbled the whole slab of metal into pieces. But... Oh, crumble through. The face of concentration. Well, that's coming off then. Uh, the long pipe was a little bit too long, so we used this jobby. It's just a half inch extension with a another socket on the end just to give us a little bit more leverage than we had with the ratchet itself. Because it was jammed in there pretty tight. Again, a bit of build up of rusty nuisance, uh, but yeah, it is coming away nice. And there we are. Right, doing the other one now, exactly the same. We've got the ratchet on with the uh, little bit of an extension on for a bit of leverage. Strain! Heave! There we go. <laughs> All right, we'll get that off, get back to you. Cool, we've got the two bolts out now then, so I think that means we can remove this uh, carrier. Woo! That was exciting, wasn't it, everyone? Okay, moving on. Next job then is to remove the brake disc and uh, it's stuck on. I think it's probably got a little bit of corrosion back there. So there are two holes provided uh, here and here. And as you can see, we're running the, uh, some bolts in there. They were off the back of the caliper, the, the yeah. slide pins, I think, from there. They're the same thread. So we're going to run those into uh, the disc and hopefully push it off the hub at the same time. So just done that um, a little bit on either side, you know, half a turn on one, half a turn on the other. Gently, gently, releasey monkey. And there we are. So, top tip for you, you can use the slide bolt pins, wherever they are, from the caliper there to do that. Next up then, uh, we're taking up the little E10 Torx thingamajiggies off this vacuum thingamajiggy. So we can get to the thingamajiggy. Good science. Good Top science. Tip. Yeah. Let's remove the nubbins and see what is behind. Ooh, stuff and that. Stuff and things. Yeah, probably things that don't want to be all ah. crusty or chunky bits. Hmm. Chunky bits. Rubbery jobbins. Cool. Uh, next thing to remove is the ABS sensor from the back of the hub. If you've uh, got one. If you've got one. This one has got one. It's just attached with a single bolt and it wants to be an 11mm head on it, but uh, at the minute it's 11mm plus some rust. Yeah. So we're just trying to clean that up uh, so as not to end up stripping that off when we the try and remove it. Precision tools. Yeah, precision tools. I could provide you with a smaller hammer, Kieran, if it's more helpful to you. No, smaller hammers are for children. Oh, okay. You just know it's going well when we're drilling things. Mm. Yeah, the bolt for the ABS sensor uh, just came off like a piece of cheese. It just basically sheared off with no force whatsoever. Uh, so now the ABS sensor is stuck on, and we are doing our utmost to remove it. The continuing dramas of the ABS sensor. Um, yeah, that bolt snapped, if you remember. Um, but Kieran has managed to slowly wiggle this ABS sensor free-ish. Yeah, it uh, required a little different angle on things to try and get in it from the top, given a obviously suitable tool like a flat-bladed screwdriver, and just kind of just tap it in. Just, just tap, tap it in. So we hope we can get the ABS sensor out and continue with this job. Um, there is a, a new job now, which is we're going to have to drill out where the uh, the old thing snapped. And I don't know, we'll work something out for that. <laughs> That's the ABS sensor out then. Uh, it was a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest. And then back here, where are we? 
here, you can see where shiny the nut has just sheared clean off. Cool. We're going to move the uh, centre bit out of here, and there's a little circlip in there. So we're just removing that now. A little fiddly, little fiddly jobber. Some time later, the circlip has been removed. She's free! So what happens now? Well, we've got this backing plate, which should just slide out if I can find something. Maybe some fingers. Get your bony fingers in there. And a little Scrooge driver. Oh, backing plate. In the tin. Kieran's okay, just removing the vacuum hoses here. There are just two. Uh, there's one on the back there, and there's one on the front which is marked with tape, so we know which way around to put them back on. A little bit fiddlier this one, but just being gentle. There, there we are then, with some pulling on the hose, that did eventually come off. Awkward nubbins. Well, taking a leaf out of the dog's book, uh, hang over the shoulder of this one. Uh, but we've got some wire wheel action just to see what actual clean metal is left to work with and if there's anything we can do that's appropriate whether there's you know uh, sockets that'll fit on or whether it is just completely domed off. Is it completely domed off? Not completely but it's not a million miles away. Um, it's not looking much like a bolt that. Uh, but you know it needs must and so we'll apply a bit of heat um, get some flames involved, um, but shiny is better than crusty, so hopefully progress. Fire! Now, I'm obviously going to be replacing those rubber seals, so I'm not too concerned about them melting into a flamey death. But just be careful of you know, any chemicals that you have been spraying on that it doesn't just instantly combust and melt your face. Well, there's the first one free. As you see, it's uh, not the best looking uh, bolt there, but applying a good bit of wallop with a hammer and a solid bit of heat, then using these lovely grippy um, Irwin's thingy jobbers, uh, we're able to get a good grip on them, and that's uh, two out. So only another six to uh, wrestle with, and obviously the remains of whatever crappy ring that was on there before. So again, for any interested parties, um, we used these Irwin bolt extractors to get that hose out. And what that is, uh, is it fits on your ratchet, but you can see it has a twisted thread. Uh, so as you are removing it, it's cutting into the nut or bolt um, to give you that extra grip. They are a handy tool to have. And usually when you use them, they don't do too much damage to what you're removing and you can sometimes use it again. Kieran does have replacements for what we are removing now, um, but we probably could use them again if we really, really needed to. Right, we have managed to remove all eight of those Huzzah! bolts. Huzzah! And actually, it wasn't as bad as we thought it would be because they looked horrendous to see them right at the beginning. They were absolutely caked in rust and basically domed off. Um, but we cleaned everything up with a wire wheel and earlier on we'd put the uh, penetrating oil on and then we applied a lot of heat and then we used the Irwin uh, remover things. Uh, this should be a 10 mil uh, head on that, so that is theoretically a 10 mil fixing. Uh, but yeah, we used the Irwins to get those off and each one came off quite nicely, thank you very much. However, here are some components <laughs> of the uh, ceiling ring which have just dismantled themselves over time through the course of uh, erosion. Co That's what comparison. that should look like. 
So that's and your, that's what the old one looks yeah, like. Ceiling ring jigsaw puzzle, if you will. So I think it was probably due for a replacement. <laughs> probably. Really, we've got the 17 mil. I've opted for a long un. Uh, you might not want to do that, but there are options available. Um, and that's for the uh, steering arm. Wrap. And we'll get that off. Ball joint business. We are continuing to remove this nut here, if it focuses, for this uh, arm. So what Kieran's done is he's wound it all the way more or less to the top, but the nut is still on just at the top there. And then, get your big favourite tool out. Give it some clobber. Hit me with your best shot. Song made famous by uh, whom there, John? Pat Benatar. Good shout. Bottle jack. Hammer. Joint. Nut. Don't ask. <laughs> when you're removing the nut from the ball joint, you might end up finding that the uh, ball joint is just spinning in place. Um, so you support that uh, steering arm and the, the ball joint from underneath. We've opted for this very obvious method of uh, a bottle jack and a hammer um, so that it prevents that long. from moving about so you can then get that nut off and crack on with your job. I think the more sensible thing to do would be to remove it completely before you Crack the to joint remove the yeah. nut. Re remove the nut completely first. Yeah. Then separate. Oh uh, no. Remove the nut first. Put it back on slightly. Then separate the joint. There we are. We get oh, there. Very in the clear. End. Oh, very, very clear. Clear. Concise. clear and concise. That's what we do. Moving on. Um, we've got to take out the uh, where the kingpins are that that is hiding underneath yet another rusty plate. These are a 12 mil. Um, once you finally knock the rusty shavings off. Um, started one going already but they didn't need any heat treatment so far. Uh, they came out or are coming out fairly easy but it's only on the first one so more than likely one of them will be uh, fudged and we'll have to probably hack it off with a chainsaw. Last bolt out and that frees off that little bracket that uh, you secure the vacuum pipes too. Um, this one, obviously, another bit of crud build up, but it is sort of freely moving. So I think a bit of twisting and it should lift out if everything else doesn't keep moving. But, uh, wiggly wiggle. I'll just keep it spinning around. There will be a bit of sealant or something that's uh, keeping it in there a little bit tight. So I'll just stop for this little sort of helicopter of a move. Kieran is spinning around. And that is one hefty kingpin going on. So having taken the uh top kingpin out we're just going to repeat the same process on the bottom and remove this one. I seem to recall earlier Kieran said that small hammers are for children. And at heart I really am a bit of a child so yeah. it's all right. That is true. Okay we'll get on with that. It's important not to mix up the uh, kingpin so that the one that's for the bottom is always for the bottom. Uh, it probably helps to keep the right orientation that it came out as well but they are a pretty tight fit, so you will need to get a good old grip on that. Uh, we did involve the every job tool. The every job tool. The every job tool. Adjustable pipe wrench, I think it might be officially called, but moving on. Um, that, whatever remains of the crusty dust seal. Um, and then it should be able to just give this a wiggle into freedom. And there's the drive shaft as well that comes with. 
with everything removed we can get a good look at the bearings themselves um, this one has sort of got quite a collection of everything I can imagine from the outside world just chilling out on top it's I think it's possibly in camouflage um, so it doesn't get attacked by predators um, top one isn't too bad um, but it is usually the bottom one that gathers all the crap um, and so I think it might be a case that seeing as everything's out I'll probably replace them anyway um, but that that is fairly caked with bad things right so some time has elapsed um, I've been off to work Kieran's been off to work we're both now back from work Kieran's arrived here uh, it's about quarter past eight in the evening, so we're sort of losing the light. But we're going to try and finish this job off. We got everything um, apart before, so now it's just a case of rebuilding everything. And we'll get straight to it. Right, Kieran's sitting here with his uh, swivel hub. And we pull the drive shaft out of the swivel hub, it just pulls straight out. Uh, we're going to clean that up. We're going to clean this business up. Uh, but looking in here, you can see this is the bottom and the top. And obviously all the crap just gets in there and sinks to the bottom and just makes everything nasty and horrible. So we'll clean it up and see what it looks like. Here's the inside of this business then. Uh, we just sort of scraped a load of sandy, horrible grinding paste out of there. Uh, we're gonna take it into the garage and clean it properly. We're also gonna have a go at getting out the, uh, the little bit of the bolt that snapped there. We'll see how we get on with that. And then over here, Kieran is cleaning out the inside of this swivel hubby bolly Thing. Jobber. Uh, and we're going to put some new grease into that. We're also, I think, possibly going to have a go at removing the old uh, inner racers so we can put the new ones in with the new bearings. Well, research suggests that uh, a one inch socket is the ideal weapon of choice when removing these inner races. So we've got just that. Um, and with a little delicate tap a tap tap. We should hopefully um, pop these out or just get the whole socket jammed in. We'll soon find out. Cool. So we got the bottom one out, we've just switched around to the other side, we're going to try and get the top one out as well. Ah! Mind your fingers, Kieran. I'll probably go on the inside. Mm. I can see movement. Nicely done, sir. Cheers, Chief. So, I don't know if you can tell, um, but that's the new one. Um, and that picnic of um, <laughs> grime uh, is, uh, I can it's just, I think you probably just tell from the inside there is the old one. Um, so, I think it, it's probably, probably close to the limit on that. So, but we'll do it anyway, just for peace of mind. We've lightly seated that inner race there, the new one in the top, and we have obviously the uh, bearings there. All we need to do now is press this into uh, the swivel hubby thing here. So we're just gonna do some tapping with some wood and put the, that in. The, the thing to obviously make sure before you start smashing it with a hammer is that you've got the inner race, inner race the right way up, so you can actually put your uh, bearing in there because uh, it's going to be a bit of a tricky sod to get out if you've already smashed it flush uh, in the old whippity wob. So Translation, that. the wrong way up. Here we go then. And we're going a bit wonky. Sophisticated hammer use. <laughs> 
the sideways hammock technique. You saw it here first. Might have to take another angle on that one. I'll have to shift the. Uh... Uh, you can see that it's not going in squarely, and it does need to go in squarely. Uh, so we're just going to reassess that and carry on in a bit. There we are then, that's all in. And it wasn't going in squarely the first time around, so there's no shame in admitting that you've not got it right the first time. We took it back out again and tried again, and then that wasn't going back in, so we took it out a second time. And then it was a case of third time lucky. Um, we managed to get that in there straight. We just sort of tapped it gently all the way around the rim, so to make sure it was going in straight. And then right at the end, we've had a piece of wood just on the top to really uh, make sure it was going all the way Drunk. home. So there we are, that's that done. On to the bottom one then. Same idea, we're just going to give it that little tap right the way around just to sort of get it going in nice and evenly rather than where we started off giving it hefty wallops and it sort of straight away going off wonky. So just gently working it around. Say gently, I'm probably making it sound like a right old brutal session. That's the bottom one in then. Um, you can kind of tell when it's gone all the way as far as it's going to do because the sound of your hammering changes. It's got a little bit of a hollow twang to it while you're hammering it in and then as it seats against uh, where it should seat here, uh, it changes, the sound changes. A bit more solid, a little yeah. less echoey. Do you want to say it or shall I say it? Well, you've got issue with me uh, rubbing up my shaft. Kieran is polishing his shaft. It's all purely professional. In a professional capacity, of course. This uh, edge on the... Uh, job here where the dust steel was, is, still, maybe. <laughs> Bits of it uh, think still are there. Is gnarly. As you can see, it is not a flat surface on which to mate the new dust steel. So, Kieran has donned his safety goggles and gloves to follow. And we've got the little uh, flap disc on the angle grinder. We're just going to try and clean that up a bit. Bit more shiny shiny on that one. Oh yeah! Quarter past ten at night and now we're working in the dark. Woohoo! Yeah, just don't ask. Okie kokey, uh, welcome to Mechanics in the Dark. Um, Refitting... Make it better, after hours. That's the one, that's a better title. Yeah. Um, the whole purpose of this was mainly to refit this um, dust seal um, and it's just making sure that you get it in the correct order when you're putting it back over the uh, hub assembly um, so that it all gets connected correctly when it goes back together but big one first because that will get bolted on last there's this split in there which gives you the ability to sort of work around Oop. make things look super easy but the the split wants to remain at the top because um, that's supposedly what they say to do um, they're being the man yeah rubber one has got a bit of flex in it thankfully it can go all the way and then I should have taken notice because it's important that that one goes the correct way as well. Beep! Technical difficulties. Yeah. We'll get back to you. Okay, so as a helpful uh, reminder, I've kind of got the other one, it's all a bit taped up, but I can kind of work out that uh, the recess wants to be poking out that way. Um, so again, 
a little bit of a bendy bit and then that's all in the correct order for screwing back down once we've got everything else back on. What's next Kieran? I'm gonna stick my shaft in that hole um, and hopefully we'll get some engaging of splines. Little bit of wiggle. Got another tune going. Ah, that's there we go. Then we'll get a good old dollop of the CV grease. Um, What's this you've got? Some uh, NLGI two uh, CV lift molly grease. Yeah. All right. Splooging away. As you can see, the inside of that uh, business there has been liberally doused with the CV, whatever it was, lithium, molly, grease. Uh, we're going to do, we've got the inner racers there with a bit of grease on. We're going to grease up the uh, bearings themselves, put those in, and start putting things back together. Kieran's loading these bearings up with the grease now, uh, working it all in, making sure it's nicely packed in there. Do the same for that one and the bottom one. One suggestion that others have made is to get a little plastic bag like for your sandwiches or whatever, um, put a good old dollop of the grease in there with the bearing and just kind of work it all around. But I'm a far more hands-on kind of uh, mucky guy. So hands-on job it is. Bloop. Get that top bearings in there. Next one. Right, now that I've got uh, that lot put together, uh, we've got to put the hub back on. And so the first sort of tricky section is just getting these splines lined up with a bit of wiggling on there and then seating it over the top of the bearings and that way it's secure we can get the king pins back in. Give it a whirl. Just want to be careful that you don't end up knocking that bottom bearing out. It's just a bit of a fiddly job. We've managed to slide that over there. It was just the top bearing had just sort of come out a little bit and it was stopping the, uh, the whole assembly going on. So we just pushed it back down there and it went on quite nicely. It was sat a bit proud. Bit Sh proud shouldn't be, but it was a bloody mess. But uh, push it back in there. Ah! Flying stuff! I'm just laying down in the dirt holding this here while uh, Kieran does something else. Uh, this reminds me of a really cool story that somebody once told me. And oh wait, it's back. Maybe another time. <laughs> Hi there. So a kingpin time. Uh, it is advisable to put a little bead of sealant around the base of that. Um, again, just helps try and keep out any unnecessary moisture. Uh, and I've got this Loctite um, oil resistant silicon sealant. Jobs are good and. So I'm going to put a little bead around there. I mean, I might do it whilst you're watching. Well, pay attention, see me uh, make a definite mess. It's probably come spooging out the wrong end. Or not at all, I mean. Let's have a look at your piping then, Mary Berry. It is the finest icing effort you will see. All the them years at baking school really paid off. Well, it's all in the name, isn't it? I knew they'd come in handy someday. There we go, a nice uh, ring of roses I think you'll uh, find. Beautiful, attention to detail is key. Okay, that business is on there. We're gonna put an extra little daub of the grease on there. So we don't want anything wearing out prematurely you know just just get frisky with it it's really Kieran is fast and loose with his lubrication it's better that way John slides right in 
fingers crossed. Now it was a fairly tight fit when trying to remove them, so it is a fairly similar effort when popping it back in. So it might require a little bit of wiggle action from everything. But it is, ah, there we go. So that's more or less in there and that will kind of tighten up once we've got the other one in there and it'll kind of balance things out a little bit. Uh, but yeah, on to the next one. That clip was a minute and 15 of pure gold. Brought to you in association with Molly Lithium Doobie Grease. Ooh, shiny new bolts. These new ones are 13 mil. The old ones that came out were 12 mil. Who knows why? But anyway, 13 mil. What time is it, Kieran? Um, it's it's late o'clock. It's 11 o'clock at night. Is it that bad? It's right. that bad. We've got the uh, king pins in the top and the bottom. We've got the shiny new bolts in there. And we're going to tighten those up to the specified torque setting, which is, Kieran? It's 25 newton metres. It's 25 newton metres. So we're going to go around and do that. I think I'll opt for the typical fashion of doing like a star pattern as best I can with a four pin effort. Okay, you don't need to watch all this, we'll just do this yeah. and see you in a bit. Ladies and gents, don't forget to put on the little bracket that holds the vacuum pipes. We did that for your benefit. Just a bit of a test to see if you were paying attention really. It's a good job one of us wasn't he? Yeah, let's make sure you, uh, when you do come to undo them, that you only undo the uh, ones at the back. Yeah. Hello again. So carrying on, the next part of the process is we, uh, again, the whole reason for doing this was that crumbly mess of a, a seal uh, that was at the back. So there's three parts. Um, it's just kind of feeding that first section in to that recess. We've got the rubber again that will sit over the top of that and sort of squeeze in just on top and that final sealing ring which closes down on everything and we get your eight bolts all the way around and they'll be done up to uh, 10 newton meters so not a lot of force there but uh, making sure that the split in the rings is up at the top I think that uh, kind of keeps a lot of the danger away from where all the moisture tends to sit We just put the eight little um, nuts into the back of the seal here and we are currently tightening those up to 10 newton meters. I believe they're also 10 mil little nuts. They are, 10 mil, 10 mil, 10 mil bolts, 10 newton meters. So Kieran's just refitted the ABS sensor and now we're trying to put the two vacuum hoses back on which have been a bit of a pain um, it's mainly just this uh, bottom one here that again access is, is really quite awkward with how it's produced but it's most of the way on there uh, might just get the pliers or something on there just to help seat that right to the base uh, but then the other one is nice and easy um, which just sits on top which I'll, I'll just do now that's that one done um, but yeah that one's not quite seated but again a little bit of extra shove should seat that home if like me you don't want your hub to come flying off while driving uh, then why not fit the backing plate and circlip so that slides back over there and there should be just enough room to get that circlip in and we've got the old special pliers hopefully I get that scooched over Oop, we've just lost a little bit of the drive shaft so I have to give that a little bit of a squeeze and bring it back out so we've got somewhere for that circlip to go well thankfully the, uh, the one of the old 12 mil uh, nuts that was hold sorry bolts always mix them up that was for the kingpins is again the perfect size and thread 
to wind in there which gives you something to pull that drive shaft back out to get you that sir clip in. Top tip from the garage. 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 Time to refit the ball joint. So I quite like a working steering wheel so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make things connected. So once we've got that one slipped in place uh, we want to reattach the nut which I absolutely have to hand uh, somewhere in this in box, of box of tricks. Bit. Can you see it people? First one uh, First one to leave it in the comments. Steering ball joint reconnected. Next step. Disky business. Whoop, 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 whoop. And uh, just we'll just whap it on really. Whap. W H A P is the technical term for reinserting your brake disc. Whap it on. Science. With the disc in place, uh, we reattach the vacuum hub. Um, I don't think there's any specific orientation for it. Um, but we're going to see what sticks. She's resistant. That's probably what the old vacuum is. And yeah, we've got the uh, six uh, bolts with the old E10 Torx little starfish on the end. We'll pop those in. Well, let's get carried away uh, with the brake disc carrier. Um, slap that over the back. <laughs> slap it, whap it, whip it, slap it. Do whatever comes naturally. These are the 17 mils on the back. I'll just give it a little bit of a twister. Uh, again, there's a torque setting that's applicable. Uh, might just swap that out on the screen for your delight. Um, but that's the carrier back in place. Well, I've taken up most of the slack on those bolts. Um, I've just had a quick check, and it does say an 85 newton meters. Uh, on the torque setting, so I'll give that. that feels pretty close. I'll do one at a time till I get the old good joyful clickiness. I'm not there yet, but you get the idea. So it was 85 newton meters. The carrier's back on, and what do they carry? The pads. Uh, so this side, obviously, you'll see would have where the pistons pressed against it, and so that one's obviously got to be the opposite side, and they do just press fit up against the uh, disc, and for a change, a little bit noise, but it couldn't be uh, simpler. He says that's definitely in pads in place, so the uh, caliper just slots over the top. Uh, just be careful you don't squish the uh, rubbers of the uh, on either side. Uh, once that's sat back where it needs to be, there's the uh, lengthy uh, fish poo screws from previous slide all the way through. I'll get tightened down. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's after midnight, um, as most reasonable jobs would be happening. But we're on the final stretch, I hope. Um, wheel back on. And um, if you've got the energy, hoof it up. Um, so with the wheel back on, um, there's obviously just the five uh, wheel nuts to secure. Um, when we've got it back on the ground we can properly tighten everything up including these for the vacuum hub again which is the E10 Torx bit but it'll all just spin while it's off the ground so we'll wait till it's on the floor.
Right, we've got the car on the ground now. Uh, it's back on its wheels, which means we can do the final tightening of the wheel nuts and the E10 uh, bolts for the vacuum hub. And as ever, when you're doing wheel nuts and also for this vacuum hub, we are tightening them progressively, so that means a little bit at a time, working our way around in a star pattern, um, so as to not put anything on wonky. Um, so you can see what Kieran's doing here, he's going around in a sort of star pattern, tightening them a little bit at a time, working his way around until everything's nicely tight. So we'll do that on the vacuum hub and the wheel nuts. Because you don't want to go to all this work for then to have a wobbly wheel as a result. Right here, with the uh, whispering hour upon us, um, that should be that side nice and tidy and uh, sorted. Um, so we're thinking whilst we've got everything out around us, we'll just crack on and do the other side. Um, you know, it's probably only take another four hours and uh, we'll have a fully sorted front end. Right, well, that's the end of that job and it's only 12.30 at night and we started this at about 9.30 this morning. <laughs> Admittedly, we've both been to work in the interim, but uh, that turned out to be a marathon of a job. Uh, so if you're doing your chimney, make sure you've got plenty of time to do that. Um, I've left Kieran to tidy up, so he's just kept me up here so late, and he's still got to get himself home and fed, probably. So, uh, yeah, big job. Um, hope it was a useful video for you. As ever, uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.